Hey guys, it's been a while since my last video, but today I'm finishing a video that I started almost three years ago. So back in 2017, um, I went and traveled to Japan with en route stops in Korea and um, in Hong Kong, and I shot a bunch of film. Also filmed a few video clips, so I'm going to tie it all together with some commentary. The cameras I took uh, was a Hasselblad 500CM, which is my main travel camera. The benefit of a Hasselblad um, and other cameras like it is the interchangeable backs. So in my case, uh, I either brought two or three of these interchangeable backs, which allow you to swap out mid-roll. Um, I have one loaded with slide film, one with color negative, and occasionally I'll bring a third, and I can't remember if I did with, uh, with black and white in it. So that mid-roll, if you see a scene that's really suited to a different film type, you can, you can swap out. Uh, I also brought a Pentax 6.7. Now I was looking for a cheap Pentax 6.7 glass over there and thinking that uh, uh, because it's a Japanese camera it might have cheaper Pentax glass. I don't know if that's true or not, but I did end up picking up this absolute beast. It's a 300mm um, uh, Pentax 6.7 you know, long lens. I mean this lens is huge. It's almost as big as my head. and. Uh, the camera itself is heavy to carry around, um, so this made it even worse. Unfortunately, since I got it, the focusing ring, it just rotates freely. It doesn't actually, uh, something's broken down inside. It doesn't actually change the internal mechanism that allows it to focus. Uh, but it was working at the time, so I shot a few photos with that as well. But mostly just traveling with the 500cm. Anyways, let's get into it. So the trip started with my arrival to Hong Kong. I'd never been there before, but the city was really interesting and a lot more tropical than I had imagined. I had a full day and night before I had to fly out, so I loaded up the interchangeable backs and hit the city. So the first images I shot were with Kodak Ektar 100. Ektar is probably one of my favorite color negative films. It's nice and saturated and as a 100 speed film, it's got uh, minimal grain. Also, color negatives tend to have more exposure latitude, so they're a lot safer to shoot than something like a slide film that's going to be a lot harder to hit the, the ideal exposure. I really like this first image, and not just because of the ice cream track, but it's an interesting scene. You've got uh, a nice foreground, midground, and background, and it all really fills the frame to give you this kind of unique slice of life street photography photo. Here's another capture of some people just a few meters away. Again, really trying to fill the frame. You've got that cool Ferris wheel and some flags in the background. Um, while the guy doesn't look too happy, it, it's kind of a neat scene. Here we've got some flags that are contrasted by this Ferris wheel and then the, uh, the buildings in the backdrop there. The Ferris wheel provides some really interesting geometry to work with. So here I've, I've framed it in with a, a tall building in the background there. While subjects, such as the Ferris wheel, can make really interesting photos, I'm often looking for more abstract elements like uh, symmetry or texture or geometry to really emphasize. So you see a little bit of that here with the Ferris wheel and the two umbrellas. And at some point I jumped on one of the ferries that crosses Hong Kong Harbor. These things are really cheap, I think about 80 cents to cross. While crossing the harbor I snagged a few photos of downtown. It's kind of it's always cool to get a, a cityscape photo, and here's no exception. So another film I was shooting at the time was Kodak E100 VS. This is a Kodak slide film that predates the recent 2018-2019 re-release of Ektachrome, which I actually have an example of here. You can see the packaging is fairly similar, and from what I've heard, uh, the results are pretty similar too. Uh, the E100 VS I was shooting was actually a 220 film, which you can see on the side of the box here, which gives you twice as many shots on a roll. It gives you 24 instead of 12. You can shoot 220 in a Hasselblad, but it does require a different back. Um, and although they look similar, they're a little bit different. I'll show you an example here. One sec. So this is a, what's called an A24 back. You can see with the 24 on the top, it signifies that you get 24 shots in a roll, twice as many as a, a 120 roll, as long as you're using 220. And the standard back that comes with this camera is uh, known as an A12 back. You can see the little 12 marking on there. Just looking at 120 and 220 rolls, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference other than the 120 marking and the 220 marking on the roll itself. 220 
uses less paper backing than the 120 roll, and that's how they get twice as much film on there. So this first shot on slide film is a good example uh, to illustrate the difference. With the slide film, you can see the darker areas of the image become a fair bit darker, and it adds that certain punchiness that uh, we see with slide film. I shot this from a street overpass and was waiting for that first taxi to pass through that corridor of light, and it gives us a unique focal point of the, the image, and then everything else just kind of falls into place nicely. Here we've got a cool capture of just some of the more unique buildings downtown. And this is one of those inexpensive ferries that crosses Hong Kong Harbor. Slide films and E100VS specifically are known for having rich saturated colors, which you can see here. Downtown I also shot some Kodak Portra 800, and just like the Ectochrome, this was also expired film. Unfortunately, this Portra 800, um, either due to storage conditions or just its age, did not give me the results I was looking for. In fact, this first photo is the only photo I was really happy with on the roll, and that was due to the fact that I was still metering for 100, and I accidentally gave this three stops more light than it needed, which is something you generally want to do with expired film, especially if it hasn't been cold stored. These other images could have been quite good, and you can see what I was going for, but I'm just really not that happy with the color. It's kind of got this muddy, grainy look to it. You'll also see some less than pleasant color casts, and it can be really hard to uh, compensate in post to correct those. I remember thinking the shot with the taxis and the crossing streets was going to turn out really good, but that color cast and the kind of granularity of it uh, really detracts from me. You know what, the shot's not too bad. I really like that lone motorbike on the right and then the, the street directions on the left. So later that evening I headed up to Victoria Peak, which is a really nice overlook of downtown Hong Kong. I loaded up the Hasselblad with Cinestill 800T, but at the time it wasn't actually available retail. It was part of a, like a beta release for their Indiegogo, and it came in these nondescript white foil packages. As far as I can tell, the film's identical, but occasionally with the beta roll, I got these static discharge marks that I have never seen on the retail roll. This building is like a mall or a lookout on top of the peak, and I really love what Sinistel does here. Those kind of orange-red halation marks that show up on the bright spots, and just the smooth color, especially when shooting at night, is just makes the images look super dreamy. For an 800 speed film, it's you know got very minimal grain. This shot too from the overlook, same deal, it's just got a ton of detail and I love the kind of orange purple halation. I ended up capturing the same image, uh, just swapping out the backs to the Portra 800 that had expired and you'll see the, I'll show it to you here, the, the difference is night and day. Now keep in mind that's probably a difference in exposure and the fact that it's expired makes a huge difference, but I really like the way Cine still turned out. You can see the Portrait 800 here turned out darker and grainier. Now I wish I'd exposed the Portrait 800 for longer to give myself a, a proper side-by-side -side comparison with the Cine still. but as I was shooting these both at like maybe ISO 500, I exposed them for the same duration of time. So the next morning I grabbed a train to the airport and caught my flight from Hong Kong to the capital of South Korea, Seoul. And just like my plan in Hong Kong, I had one full day and night to check out the city. I ended up spending most of my day at the Korean War Museum, as that era of history always kind of interested me. I brought the Hasselblad along and shot a few frames that turned out pretty cool. So these images from the War Museum were shot on the same roll of Kodak E100VS that I shot in Hong Kong. Here we have those nice saturated colors and this photo of the little girl feeding some fish is kind of neat. Outside the museum we have a scene of all the military hardware from the era. And this is probably my favorite photo from the museum itself is this immense display out front. Getting it all in frame was actually quite difficult. And you only get a sense of the scale when you look at the size of the people compared to the statues they stand next to. Later I loaded one of the Hasselblad backs with Fuji Pro 400H, uh, another color negative film, a bit higher sensitivity than the slides I was shooting, and took a few photos that evening.
While I wasn't using a tripod, I would sometimes brace the camera against a wall or set it on a stair in order to uh, shoot slightly longer exposures without having that camera shake. The next day, I flew from Seoul to Nagasaki, which is at the southern tip of Japan. I would spend the next few weeks taking trains and staying at hostels on my way up to Tokyo, where I would eventually fly home from. One of the first places I stayed in Japan was this cool little surf hostel in Miyazaki. It had its own little skate park on site, and I shot this photo with the Pro 400H, uh, bracing it on a railing to get that long exposure. While at the hostel, I met this cool guy named Haruki, and before I departed, I made sure to get a photo of him. After Miyajima, I headed north to Kita Kyushu, where I spent a few days. While at the hostel, I was invited out a few evenings to go check out the cherry blossoms as part of a seasonal celebration they call a hanami there. I shot a few images here. This first one on uh, Fuji Pro 400H, and this one on the Sinistel 800T beta roll. Kirikiyushu and its castle in the center of the city is also where I started testing out the 300mm lens that I'd picked up for the Pentax 6.7. While I don't normally shoot with long lenses, it was a fun challenge to play with the unique perspective this lens affords, especially the way it compresses foreground and background together. With the Pentax, I also shot with a 90mm lens, which gives a more normal field of view. For reference, the 300mm on a Pentax 6.7 has the, about the same field of view as a 150mm lens on uh, a smaller 35mm film camera. After Kirikiyushu, I headed up to Hiroshima in the nearby island of Miyajima. Miyajima is a small forested island with all sorts of shrines, hikes, and interesting features. This is where I finished the black and white roll with the Pentax 6.7. After shooting the black and white, I loaded some slide film into the Pentax 6.7. I believe the film was Velvia 100, and while I wasn't happy with the results, I'll share them with you here. While on Miyajima, I was also shooting the Hasselblad with Fujifilm Velvia 50, and I was much happier with the color and results. We've got a nice contrasty image of people on the ferry ride across to the island and the large iconic Tori gate that stands in the water just in front of the island. There are quite a few deer on the island and I was able to get a nice close detailed shot of this guy here. And a few other random shots just from trekking around the island. Simultaneously, in another Hasselblad back, I was shooting through some Kodak Portra 400. You can see these images are less contrasty, but have a nice soft color rendition. On one of the hikes I came across this grouping of these little statuettes. I was later told this was a shrine of good fertility, so it's up to you to infer what the shapes of these little statuettes are. Just north of Miyajima is the historic city of Hiroshima. I was especially keen to see the Hiroshima Peace Memorial, and specifically the atom bomb dome. Arriving there at night, I shot some of the Sinistel 800T. And here you can see it does a great job rendering good detail and color, especially at night. In the second image, you can see some of those static discharge marks just above the dome that I spoke about. I've only encountered them on the beta roll. Subsequent retail rolls have never given me this issue. The next stop was the city of Himeji, which is known for its immense historical castle complex. Wandering the grounds, I found this nice scene with both the sakura, the cherry blossoms, and the castle in the background. At one point, I came across a group of older Japanese men. They were all standing together carrying cameras and standing next to a waterway, so I went over to take a look. I got a nod of approval when they saw the Hasselblad, and I ended up shooting a few slides. Let me see if I can grab them here. So this is the scene I thought they'd been shooting. You know, a nice composure with the waterway and the castle. So I went to leave, but one of the men stopped me and pointed to his watch. It uh, became apparent they were waiting for something. So I stood around for maybe a minute more and this boat came through. The boat really added something to the frame. So I took two photos here and the one with the boat going towards the castle is probably one of my favorite photos from the whole trip. You know, the frame's really full, it's got such interest in it, the color's great, I just love so much about it. 
These next images were shot on the roll of Sinistil in the city of Osaka. This image is awesome with the brightly lit tower contrasting with the kind of dystopian cityscape below. Here I took a cool photo of the Umeda Sky building taken from directly below. It's actually kind of two buildings that have been interconnected with each tower of the skyscraper, one on the top and one on the bottom of the frame. You can see the bottom of two escalators that cut diagonally across the frame. This next image is taken looking down those escalators as I'd placed the Hassel lad on one of the stairs and then did a long exposure as it traveled down the escalator, leading to sort of a dreamy image with some motion blur. It's got some static marks at the bottom, but honestly it looks pretty cool here. These next images were taken in the city of Kyoto on the iconic Mount Inari. You may have seen photos of this place before. It's got thousands of these cool orange gates leading up the side of the small mountain. I shot a number of frames here with quite a few different rolls, but I wasn't really happy with the results of any of them. I just found the colors I got weren't appealing. After Kyoto, I continued onward toward Tokyo, eventually making it there with about three days before I had to fly back home. The Tokyo subway system is pretty complex and busy, but once I figured it out, I was able to travel around the city, checking out different locations and taking a few photos here and there. Most of the images shot in Tokyo were with the Kodak Ektar 100. We've got a few photos here from Shibuya Crossing, which would be like the equivalent of Times Square in New York, just a large five-way intersection in the heart of Tokyo. This image of Tokyo Tower is shot from Mori Tower in Rapongi Hills. I braced the Hasselblad right up against the glass of the window in order to minimize camera shake and also prevent glare and reflections from getting onto the image. I think the exposure time was about three or four seconds wide open. This cool image from Shibuya Crossing was shot the same way. It was about an eight second exposure and it worked out really well because you got two people standing still while everyone else is moving during that exposure, giving a cool look of them holding still in a sea of people. This one was shot from an elevated train platform. And here we have a Shinkansen, one of the many bullet trains I took across the country. This was the last image I shot on Cinestill and you can actually see it got kind of messed up in processing at the top edge of frame, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Before leaving Tokyo, I took a few photos of the friends I'd made at the hostel there. In the end, I figured the friends you make are more important than the locations you visit. So it's nice to have an image to remember them by, and also a nice gesture to send them a photo a couple weeks after you get home. Hey, thanks for watching my photo journal. I should have more content on the way with another trip I filmed back in 2017. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and hope to see you soon. Peace.